So here we have one of the many plans. This is one of the one, this is going to be the one that I spend most of my time looking at. This is the layout of the bottom floor. So you have the front door here. This is the uh, main lobby area. Then a set of stairs come up here, toilet here, living room. It tells you on here um, what each room is. Living room here, dining area, come through to the kitchen through here, utility room and a study. Now, as you can see, all of this here is information that can't be drawn on here or that might take up too much room if you've put um, a little arrow and a marker on this because all of this, every single annotation is something that needs to be on here. Uh, so all of these are on the side because they don't need to have the little arrow and it's just gonna bung up the place and take up too much room. You've got the uh, architect's name, you've got the address which I blacked out. You got the drawing item, the drawing title, and you have the project number, which is the um, the number that the architect has allocated it. A drawing number. You have a scale, the date, and it tells you who it's drawn by, and a revision number. If there's say for example, I don't want that toilet there. I want it on this sort around in that door over here. Then that would be a revision number two down here. But we don't need to worry about that scale. Now this is very, very, very important. The scale is one to 50, so just take anything. For example, this wall here, for one millimeter on here, as in on the drawings, you see it on here, it would be 50 millimeters in real life. So it's obviously scaled down one to 50. So this essentially is 50 times smaller than it actually is. Right, so this, as I said, is one of the most important parts. So what, what we have here, all the way along, we have measurements that measurements deter determining every single wall, every single angle, every part of it. Like for example, 275 is this tiny little nib here. It's denoted by this here. You have the uh, lines showing, go straight across showing you where it is. Like for example, this line here comes to here. Anyway, that's, that's that. Right, so let's move on to the next one because we've got a lot to go through. This is one that we are going to be using next. This is the setting out one. It says down here, house B, foundation and block and beam floor setting out. Now foundations, what are foundations? Foundations are, so again, this is a bird's eye view, a plan, bird's eye view of, of, the, uh, of the house. These large, lines here, ignore the, the smaller lines in the middle, just go for the, the, the outside lines, they denote where the footings go. Now footings, you dig down into the ground a metre deep, normally a metre deep. They sometimes can ask you to go deeper, but in this case it should be fine to dig a metre deep. So you dig down a metre in the width that this denotes here, which is uh, 450, it says 450 for this section and this section, but these sections are 600. I don't know if it actually says that. Oh yeah, here we go, over here, 600 foundation, 600. It tells you there. All the information you need are on these drawings. So these are 600 wide by a meter deep. And what you do, you dig that down, you fill it up with concrete, which seems funny, you're digging it out just to fill it up again, but it provides a solid base for the house to be built on. If you didn't have that, the house, a high chance the house could sink or move or subside or, or anything. So yeah, we have to pay careful attention to that. The footings are one of the most important parts because the house sits on it. If it's wrong, the house will fall down. Very rare case it will fall down, but it will fall down. So here we have the, uh, what we have here. This says CL foundation. The CL stands for center line. There's a lot of acronyms on plans because you just can't fit in the long words. Sit, but obviously in this case, there's plenty of room, but anyway, CL center line foundation. So what I'm gonna have to do is all these dotted lines, I'm not sure if you can see on there, there are dotted lines going all the way through the center of each of the foundations. Like You can see it clearly over here, but these lines go straight through the middle and that denotes where the center of the foundations are. So I'll be, to get these center lines, what you need to do is see where you have all these, these uh, line crossover points here. What I'm gonna have to do is go around the whole job or each of these points, I'm gonna set up some um, some pegs, like wooden pegs, put them in the ground, and so you have two pegs either side, and then one going straight through the middle. Entire bit of string around the middle, and it runs straight through. They're gonna be set up at each line here, 
and then you get string line, like almost like real string, but um, setting out string line. This, if you pull it, is not flexible. If you pull string line, it's got flex in it, so you can pull it so it's nice and tight, because the last thing you want is the string to drag in the middle to like, instead of being nice and straight like that, it'd sag in the middle because you won't get a correct reading. So that's the plan. What, what we do is we set up those boards that I said about, we tie, tie them on to, tie the string line onto them to get a dead straight line. So we set up one board on this side and one board on this side. Let's just, okay, let's take into consideration this line here because we've got a line going all the way through. We'll set up one board here, we'll set up one board here, tie a string line in between it in the line that is going through the center of the foundations. And once we've set up all of them all the way around, so we'll have lines absolutely everywhere, we get a can of spray paint and we spray lines on the floor where we want to dig the foundations. So when it comes to using the digger, you can see it and the bucket, the center of the bucket will go on the center line. You just dig down, dig, 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 dig the whole thing down one meter deep and there you have your foundations. Easier said than done because this is quite complex because you've got little uh, lines like this like that, that jut in and out. They're called dog legs where it juts in and out. So we've got a few of them, nice straight lines here. And then again, obviously the, um, the fireplace, that's gonna be where the fireplace is by the way. Uh, that's going to be an awkward dig. Some of this might have to be done by hand. Right, so that is the foundations and block and beam setting out. These, right, before we carry on, these um, these funny arrows here, as it says here, um, no, it doesn't say there. Where does it say it? Oh, there it goes. Direction of span of block and beam floor. So that tells you that the beams, I'll get into the block and beam when we, when we come to it, but the gist of it is you put concrete beams running across in sort of 400 gaps. I can't, you can't really see my hands, 400 gaps. And then in the middle would sit a block. I don't know if I explained that very well, but we'll get to that in more detail later. Anyway, that's the direction of the span. So that would be telling me that those beams are going this way. So yeah, it's telling me that the beams are going this way, the beams are going this way, and on here the beams are going that way. So that's something I need to know. Right, okay, let's move on to the next one. There we go. This is, as it says down here, first floor plan. GA. I'm not quite sure what the GA means. Anyway, I'm not that bothered about that. <laughs> Another acronym, I don't know what it is. So uh, the stairs coming up here, we have a nice big landing around here. Bedroom, bedroom, bathroom, the master bedroom with an ensuite walk in wardrobe. <laughs> and what else do we have in here? These dotted lines here are for steel beams that go right the way through the building to hold the roof up. We also have all of these, again, loads and loads of information just letting you know what everything is. For example, 100 millimeter, seven Newton block work, which is this wall here, 100, 100 millimeter, seven Newton block work partitioned uh, partition plastered both sides. Now, 100 millimeter is the thickness, seven Newton is the density. Seven Newton, they are high density blocks. They are very heavy, very thick, and very difficult to break. The regular internal block work, which the outside walls will be done, not upstairs, downstairs, are 3.6 Newton meters. So a little, a little under, a little over half. Uh, again, fantastic amounts of um, information that needs needs taking note of, and that's that. We'll move on to the next one. Now, this is a uh, chippy's dream or nightmare, depending on which way you want to look at it. Again, house B, first floor structure plan. This is the exactly as it says, the first floor. Where you call like you have ground floor, first floor, second floor, like if you go to Debenhams or, or a, a mall or something like that, you've got the different the floors. This is literal the floor. So these are where you set up for all of the timbers. So this would be where the staircase is. Mm -hmm. Remember, take, take note of this. This is how it looks. This is the staircase coming up. So if you whip off that, that tells you where the floor is. All the floor is made out of wooden, what's called um, joists. These are what those joists are. They're bits of wood that, that will sit on the internal block work of the ground floor and 
that's where they, they sit. They sit they sit on there. And on top of this, you put wooden flooring down on top of that, like um, especially designed, I don't know if you've you've seen it, green wooden flooring, it's slightly uh, water resistant. And then you put, it's not like the, the wooden flooring, like this kind of thing, that, this is the visible wooden flooring. This is the structural wood. It's like really thick. Uh, I think it's 45 millimeters. It tells you on it, they're, they're all probably different. 200 by 50 C24 grade floor joists. So this is telling you the layout of where all the floor beams go. And that's pretty much it. It's very complicated. Well, it's not actually very complicated. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the same as everything else. It just tells you all the in information you need everywhere. Like for example, this here, where you see the gap between the two walls, that is where a window's going. And it says there, Katnik CGE 90-100 lintel. So that tells you the size of the lintel that needs to go over the top of that window. Now, a lintel is what goes over the top of the blockwork to hold. So you have a gap for the window to sit in and the lintel goes over the top to hold everything above it. So like all the brickwork that goes above it, you have to have something in there to hold it so that it doesn't fall in. Right, so that's the first floor joists. Let's move on again. Here we have the roof structure plan, as it says again down here, roof structure plan. Now again, Chippy's dream or nightmare, depending on which way you want to look at it. This is telling you how the pitch of the roof. So this is, assume that this is the, the roof as you look at it from side on. So the roof would sit like that, and this is telling me what timbers these are, what angle they go at, and basically the ins and outs of how it's built. Uh, again, more information, and you can see there are triple, these, these are single beams all going through. These are triple beams that are bolted together because these squares with the crosses in are gonna be skylights. You might have skylights in your house where you open them in the roof, they're very nice. You let lot, lots of light into rooms that don't normally have windows. Yeah, so we're gonna have lots of those, so lots of double and triple beams going on in there. Uh, that's pretty much the size of that. Again, you can see the, the dotted line for the steel beams that go through. That So these hips, these are called hips. I don't really quite know how to explain them. They're where you had the roof at an angle, the front bit slopes down. So you've got the two roof looks like that. I'm trying to show you at a slight angle and the roof would slide down at the front. That's called a hip. It's quite difficult to to explain it here. I'll show you when we when we come further along. I've got some other drawings that should be able to explain it a bit more in depth. So that's that tells you where to put all of the uh, all the timbers. Again, move on. Let's see what's next. Right, this is an elevation of a, a cross section. So this is looking side on at the house, as you can tell the roof, and this is the side on view, because you can see the side on view of all the rooms, because you can see the doors in there. And there's a phenomenal amount of information. All of this is just stuff you need to know. This is telling you, this is showing the side on a uh, load bearing block partition. Now load bearing means that everything above it is sitting on that. So this is holding up what's above it. Lots of places you don't have load bearing ones, load bearing walls, and they're normally made out of stud work, which is just timber rather than block work. You can see here you have the outside skin of brickwork, the inside skin of block work, and there's a cavity in the middle. Now, outside, as I just said, is brick, which is what you're going to look at. You've got a cavity in the middle, which is 100 mil, round about that thick, and that is there to stop any damp, any water getting into the building. If you had just the brick, then the whole, all the bricks would get soaking wet, the inside of the house would get soaking wet. A lot of old buildings don't have these cavities and they are riddled with damp. Uh, yeah, the, and the, and the uh, cavity will be a partial fill insulation, which means, so you have the 100 mil here, a lot of times you get insulation that fills the whole 100 mil and it doesn't let the building breathe and also there's a chance, they say it can't, there's a chance that the damp will go through. I still think it can, but anyway, partial fill means only half of it will be filled up with insulation. So that's partial fill. The internal block work, they're lightweight uh, blocks, as I said before, uh, I believe they're either 3.6 or 3.2 Newton meter density. They're very lightweight and they're thermally efficient as well. 
tons of information on there, which I'm not going to go through all of it, but it's telling you the heights of the the windows, the heights of the first floor, heights of the second floor windows, and heights of the damp level. Yeah, heat, damp, DPC, damp proof course. Now that is very, very important. When you build up to um, the height that the first floor is going to be, like the literal floor that you walk on, you have to put in what's called damp proof course, which is plastic, 100 mil wide, probably about two mil thick, it's like an, it comes in a roll. You roll it out along. So the idea is the 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 uh, the water comes from down here, and normally it soaks up through the brick brickwork blockwork up into the building, and you'd get damp. So you put this plastic in to stop it going up. So assume this white line is where the damp is. The water can't go any higher than that because plastic's in the way. That's a brief idea of damp. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Another cross section. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one because it's there's not really a great deal on here. It's just telling you about this small little lean-to uh, roof that hangs over the back doors. Just a few little details on how it's made. That's it, really. I'm not going to spend too much detail on that because it's well, there's not much to it. Another cross section, very much the same as the other one, but just a different side of the house. And again, lots of information, just big roof here, a dormer. This is called a dormer, so that bit of front, it's just going to look like, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll skip ahead and show you another one, just so I can explain what I'm on about. Right, let me try and find it. I've got all bloody tons of drawings here. I can't, right, okay. So this is an elevation. This would be what the back of the house looks like. You've got patio doors. Window, window, couple of roof lights, window, window. Now, this roof here, this is all roof and this is a dormer. This is the front, what it looks like, front on elevation, this here. So if I put these two sort of kind of next to each other, if I can, get them in the same shot. So that's front on that side on. So it sticks out from the house and it sticks out from the house like this. Um, that's what a dormer is really and it's just gives you a bit more room this is going to be the build we're doing it's kind of like a chalet type building where the bottom floor is just all floor and then the second floor well the ground floor and then the first floor the first floor is in the is in the roof whereas most places have first floor uh, ground floor first floor then the roof sits on top of it but the long and short of it is we're putting the upstairs in the roof uh, okay so yeah that's another cross section with all those details on it loads of the height details and oops my light's gone off so loads all sorts of details in there and then as i've shown you these are the elevations so all it is is just showing you what it looks like again with some height details on the side and it tells you the reference number for the windows so if you had a window schedule which a window schedule i don't have one which it just it just lists the windows, the sizes, and what windows they are. That's essentially it. Uh, so, yep, that's uh, an elevation. I'll go through and show the. Yeah. Well, I'm running it. This is the next one with a chimney stack. Dormer, dormer. Pretty much it. Not much information on these. These are just heights generally. But, yeah, that's that. And then I'll show you the last two elevations. So, that is the elevation of the front of the house yeah front door windows dormers chimney yeah much the same the this this section here is the brickwork so all of this up to here is all brickwork and then this is all roof so it's a slight difference yeah and again heights a few details for your annotations here and there about damp and heights of floors and what the front steps made out of and you know, all sorts of jazz and now we're on to the last elevation. That is the side view of uh, the south side. So side door into the utility room, rainwater pipe. So it's it doesn't say yeah it does RWP five. So it's telling you that that is a rainwater pipe number five and RWP four rainwater pipe number four. So that is just taking all the water off the roof into your guttering and down into the ground. So 
that's that these will be the rainwater pipes will be diverted to a cycleway which I'll get to in a second on the last drawing so that's that here we have the last last drawing oh, let's zoom out a bit this is the last uh, drawing this is the landscape master plan now this is showing house one house two this is what the two houses finished should be look should look like you have the driveway you have a bit of front garden driveway patio patio now these dotted squares here these are the cycleways that i was just talking about a minute ago they are essentially a one meter cubed hole in the ground cubed i don't mean not well i mean cubed by one meter by one meter by one meter every side of it is one meter so imagine a dice in the ground that's one meter but it's a hole and that's what the cycleway is and it's filled up with pea shingle which is what you put in the driveway, pea shingle and just lumps of hardcore, like lumps of rubble, like bits of brick and block and stuff like that. That's all thrown in there. So that any water that this line here is a is a, where it's showing where the pipe goes to the rainwater pipe that takes all the rainwater off the roof. So essentially all the rainwater off the roof goes down the rainwater pipe into this pipe and into the soakaway. You don't have the rainwater pipes going into the main drains where all your all your your toilet and all that go because when it rains if everyone did it the whole thing would just be just too much water so it's into the back garden and it all soaks in the back garden and makes your grass grow lovely and green uh, and it's also shown you different sections like the gravel drive patio just what trees to put in just loads of information here and over here it's just got pictures of what it should look like so like this fence here for example is going to be going along here on the front you've got a great drain not a great drain, as in a great drain. I mean a great drain because it's got a grate on the top. Um, pea shingle, hedges, trees, just other bits and pieces. So, yeah, that is the size of it. So, now that I've gone through all of that, again, because I did it once, I just didn't press record. If there's anything you don't understand, let me know down in the comments and I will try my best to address it as we move forward or in another video. But like I said... A lot of there's just so much information in all of these to take in at one time so if you want to pause at any point when when you can see these just to have a little look through you're more than welcome um and yeah any questions just let me know in the comments and i'll address them right let's get back to it off we go lovely <laughs> 